Hi, I'm Mike with Craft Supplies USA, and today we're going to turn a ring with the Artisan Ring Boring Head. Rings are fun to make, and they're a great way to use the small bits of highly figured wood that are too small for other projects. However, there's one part of ring turning that everybody seems to struggle with, and that's sizing the ring blank to fit the core. It can be difficult to get a straight, properly sized hole. If it's too big, the ring core won't fit. And if it's not straight, you'll end up with glue gaps. In today's video, I'll introduce our solution, the Artisan Ring Boring Head. The boring head makes sizing the ring blank easy and incredibly precise. It ensures that you always bore a straight hole and allows you to sneak up on the correct size without oversizing the hole. I'll turn the ring from start to finish showing you how this tool works and we'll link to everything in the description below. Let's get started by choosing a blank that is 1 16th wider than our ring core. Blank selection on a ring is very important. Once turned, there is very little material left and any wood movement can result in a crack. Select a very dry, or better yet, stabilized wood, a dense exotic, or an acrylic blank. I'll be turning my ring out of a stabilized piece of redwood burl. Before turning our ring, we need a flat reference face on the blank. Lay some 120 grit sandpaper on a flat surface, and make sure one side is sanded totally flat. Once flat, wipe away any dust and apply double-sided tape to the reference face. Then flip the blank over and mark the center and set the blank aside. Next, mount a waste block in your chuck and use a skew to true the face. This will be our jig for drilling and rough turning the ring core. Now remove the backing from the tape and line up the point of a revolving center with your center mark on the ring blank. Advance the tailstock until the blank is mounted between the center and the waste block. Then rough turn the blank around with the tailstock in place. I'll do this with a spindle gouge and the lathe running around 2500 RPM. Don't turn it down too far, just get it evenly round. Once the blank is round, select a drill that is approximately half the diameter of your ring core. Mount it in a drill chuck in the tailstock. Turn the lathe on to around 750 RPM and drill a pilot hole completely through the ring blank. You'll know you're through when the shavings turn to the color of your waste block. Now it's time to open up the hole for the ring core to fit snugly and we'll use the ring boring head. Remove the drill chuck from the tailstock and insert the boring head with the dial facing you. The boring head comes with a variety of cutters used in the machining industry. For our purposes, any of the cutters will do. Select one and make sure to remove the plastic wrapper, then insert it into the center hole of the head. Position the cutter so the flat is level with the bed of the lathe and tighten the set screw. To keep the boring head from wobbling side to side, snug the quill locking handle just enough to remove any play. If you can't advance the quill, loosen the lock until it moves. Move the tailstock up until the cutter is close to the blank and lock down the tailstock. The dial on the side is used for moving the cutter head side to side. Position the cutter so it will take about an eighth inch wide cut. Don't take a heavier cut or you'll introduce some chatter that may split the blank. Now turn the lathe on to around 2000 RPM and bore through the blank by turning the hand wheel on the tailstock to advance the cutter. Stop advancing when you feel the cutter head hit the double sided tape and back out the cutter head. Use the dial to move the cutter head another eighth inch and repeat the process. If the head wobbles, tighten the quill locking handle a bit more and take a lighter cut. Stop the lathe and check your fit. This is where the ring boring head really comes in handy. First, it guarantees a perfectly straight cut. Second, the boring head allows you to sneak up on the fit with extreme precision.
Keep removing small amounts of blank material and test the fit frequently until the ring core fits. Press the ring core into the hole until it's flush with the waste block. Next, use a skew to turn down the side of the blank until it is just a hair wider than the ring core. If you accidentally scratch the side of the ring core, you can usually buff it out with the white diamond compound on a buffing wheel. After turning, carefully peel the blank away from the waste block with a putty knife. I like to keep the core in for this process for extra support. Use slow, steady pressure so the blank doesn't split. Now we're ready to glue the core into the blank. Start by scuffing the core on some 220 grit sandpaper for a better bond. Lightly apply CA glue or epoxy to the inside of the blank. Lay the blank flat and insert the core until it is flush. Wipe away excess glue and let it cure. Then mount the blank on the ring turning chuck between the appropriate bushings. Place a 60 degree cone center in the tailstock and bring it in until it is flush in the dimple on the chuck. Now we can turn the ring to size. I prefer using a negative rake scraper because it is not aggressive and easy to control. No matter what tool you use, just remember that the blank is delicate, so take light cuts. Once it's turned to shape, sand the blank through at least 400 grit. Now it's time to finish the blank. I'll be using a CA finish and I'll be covering the basics here, but if you want a more in-depth video, check the description below. With the lathe running at around 200 RPM, drip some thin CA on a piece of paper towel and smooth it out, then spray with activator. Repeat this process and apply 8 to 10 coats. Now smooth out any inconsistencies in your finish with some steel wool, then polish the blank with Micromagic to finish the ring. With the Artisan Ring Boring Head, you can easily get the perfect ring every time. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more wood turning videos.